This is King Noble, Black Supremacy. And with this particular video, I want to talk about how black people's celebration of white holidays, particularly the 4th of July, shows how we have a sado masochist relationship with white supremacy, basically an S&M relationship. With the masochists, we derive pleasure out of the suffering and pain caused to us by white supremacy. And it's shown because they can beat us down all year round. They can brutalize us, oppress us, subjugate us, incarcerate us, kidnap us. We can experience the racism, the hatred, the disenfranchisement. We can experience that all year round. And we could talk about how much black lives matter and put emphasis on the injustices when they shoot down black women in front of their children or just shoot down black women for any reason and just murder black men at regular traffic stops in cold blood and walk away with it with impunity. We experience this all year round and we make this an issue and we're very aware of it on a massive scale. Then we turn around and celebrate the white man's holidays the white man's freedom without control or support of any forces outside of itself to oppress us. It's freedom to subjugate us within this country. The United States of America of the United States government. How can we celebrate that unless we secretly somehow derive pleasure out of our pain and suffering under the brutality of white supremacy. Some say it's the Stockholm Syndrome. But no. I say it's deeper than that. Because we're actually getting pleasure. People are going out on the 4th of July, cooking barbecue, donning the red, white, and blue flag. That is the flag of oppression, bestiality, Brutality, hatred, racism, United States imperialism, white supremacy. And we can go out there and pop fireworks and act like somehow we're free and independent and we are clear. The average person, if you ask them, are they free and independent from white supremacy? And they'll tell you absolutely not, that blacks have no freedom and we have no independence. So we, we get pleasure out of our suffering. And that whole thing of pleasure from suffering came out of Christianity. That's why it was so important for us to get a unique narrative of Christianity. See, as Christianity is taught to us, it has a different narrative than it is presented to the white man. They made sure that they fashioned our preachers to come into the slave quarters to give us a unique version of Christianity to help reinforce our willingness to be slaves, to break the rebellious spirit in us and to make slavery make sense to us logically, to appeal to our reason and our emotions through Christianity. So they give you this Christ figure, this Jesus who his highest thing that he could do was to suffer for God as the son of God, get on a cross and suffer and somehow derive pleasure and pride and dignity out of suffering that his God who so-called loved him, his, the only begotten son had to be tortured. So it makes us think that torture is okay, that suffering is okay, and through how Christianity is taught, we derive dignity out of our oppression, out of our brutality, 
out of our mistreatment. So that helps reinforce the masochism. You ask a lot of people why they celebrate the 4th of July and they say, you know, I don't really celebrate the 4th of July. I understand what it means about white independence and how it has nothing to do with us as a people. But it's just a day off that me and my family just take and we just traditionally get together as a family because those are days we have off. And we can come together. We've been doing it for years. And you think that's a coincidence because you don't understand how corporations and capitalism works hand in hand with white supremacy. That capitalism supports white supremacy. That's why we talk, we talk about black owned businesses and opening up our own businesses and the financial institutions. We forget that these financial institutions in America support white supremacy. You have federal holidays where businesses are shut down and closed down and you get days off from work, forcing you into celebrating these holidays by default. So capitalism and the financial institutions of white supremacy and all of that, as greedy as it could become, will make sure that these institutions serve the objective and the agenda of white supremacy and that they're at heart, they are essentially patriotic to United States imperialism. So yeah, you've been given those days off to make sure that you keep in focus the dominant idea, the dominant and core value of patriotism to United States imperialism. That's a fact. So you don't just have these days off. These aren't just days off. These are specific days off where you are under the mind control of how the institutions have set up to reinforce white supremacy in the minds of the masses of the people that the church and the state works in conjunction to reinforce white supremacy. But you're celebrating it. You're getting pleasure out of it. If you get pleasure, pleasure out of your suffering, pleasure from he who causes the suffering, The sadistic one. Pleasure from he who calls the suffering. If you derive pleasure out of it. Then your sufferings will never end. Your sufferings will never end as long as you derive pleasure from he who is causing the suffering. If you can celebrate that system, that loop, that cycle. That pattern. As long as you can support that, it can never end. But a lot of people feel that, you know, in America, black people, that they have individual freedom. So they think when they're celebrating the 4th of July, that they're set up celebrating their independent freedom as though it's some feudal lord lordship where they, their own house is their nation and their only family is their nation and their community. And they have the right to be independent and their personal pursuit of happiness in this country. And they, they don't see all of the police brutality and all the negativity and the disenfranchisement and the ignorance and the miseducation and the propaganda. It doesn't affect them directly. Because they feel like, you know, I have a right to go to work and, you know, do nothing stopping me and I can succeed and I can flourish and I can enterprise and I can grow on the corporate ladder and I can be a hard working Protestant Christian. And then I can work very hard to get what I deserve and I can earn my keep in this country. So they don't identify with the struggles of the collective of black people because 
it's not happening to them. It seems like a lot of opportunity, personal opportunity for them. So personally, they feel like an American. So they're not going to try to identify with a national concept or national construct as far as relating to the collective struggle of the masses of black people because they get such personal benefit from just feeling like an American and not attaching themselves to that burden, to the black man's burden. So they kind of disattach from that and they don't really identify with that and they just try to grow in their own personal success and develop their own personal situation and their own family and do the best they can to be a law-abiding, hard-working citizen. So they feel free in that, free in, the, in their pursuit of happiness. Because nobody's stopping them from filling out applications and getting as much as education as they want to get in this country and trying to get grants and loans and open up their own businesses. Who's stopping them so they don't identify with the struggle of the masses of black people? Until they have that one racist event in their life. They have that one final showdown or that one confrontation with white supremacy that reminds them that no matter how free they felt personally, that they won't escape being identified with the mass struggle of black people within this country. But unfortunately, until this day happened, it's very remote and distant to them. They can't seem to identify with the mass struggle. And they think to more focus on personal development and personal growth and gain is a more wise attitude to take within this country. Until they hunt it by the true racist attitude, racist mindset, and racist objective of this country. And then they want to holler out, fuck the system. Then they want to holler out, we all need to get unified. Then they want to holler out racism. Then they want to holler out how unfair this country is. But they couldn't holler that out before they had their own personal confrontation. Because they felt like they was personally climbing the ladder. Personally climbing the ladder. And that no matter what the masses condition of black people is. Economically. That there was so much room for their own personal growth within this country. That they should choose personal benefit. And personal advantage. Over collective struggle. Until they get hit with the reality of their inability to escape the collective struggle as long as racism is thriving within this country. And that's when you have a Bill Cosby. And that's when you have a Tiger Woods. That you're going you're gonna to be identified with the collective struggle of melanated people within this country. Bottom line. But we get so much pleasure from this country that it's hard to be against it because we understand the pain of the masses. But the potential for pleasure that we can attain for as individuals make us ignore the plight of the masses as a daily routine. And some of us, we share in the pain of the masses. But the potential for pleasure that we can obtain makes us overlook even our own pain and torture and struggle and suffrage under white supremacy. Because why it's very painful, there's a lot of pleasure. Because hell, we got it better than anybody else in any other country. We live in better than people in third world countries. A second class citizen in this country is greater than someone living in a third world country. So we should be proud that we live in this country, no matter how many ass whoopings we get, no matter how many black people end up dying by a system that was supposed to set up and serve and protect them. Or how we're victims of the type of prop propaganda through capitalism and commercial commercialism that kind of creates our music industry that helps create black on black crime. The type of propaganda where people come out with songs chanting Molly and Percocet that make getting high and using drugs a life goal. 
and we wonder why our community has opioid addictions and the music that is promoted by the unseen hand of white supremacy continues to destroy the self-image of the black community. But hell, the pleasure is greater than the pain, like a drug addict. The drug is painful, the withdrawals, the deterioration of the body, the destruction of one's social paradigm and connection to family, friends, and relative. But hell, the pleasure is greater than the pain. See, the pleasure of America is greater than the pain that we suffer, the life that we lost, the injustice that we see, the degradation that we experience. The pleasure is greater because we still got entertainment. We still got rap. We still got a small window where we can blow everything we got to California dream. See, the pleasure is greater than the pain. We got strip clubs. We got basketball games, football games, nice trinkets and toys, Lambos. See, the pleasure is greater than the pain, though. We feel the pain. We see the condition that our people in. And even though those people whose condition is worse than than ours and those who have it worse than ours, we see their pain. We identify with their pain. We feel their pain. Their pain. But we derive pleasure, pleasure from the sight of pain. Because, hell, we martyrs. Hell, we like Christ. We like he who suffered. He who derived transcendental pleasure out of physical pain. Pain is the way to get to heaven. Pain is the way to be transformed. That's what Jesus taught us. That's why we was given us Christianity so we can see the ultimate salvation and the highest, most divine and sublime pleasure can be derived from pain. So we'll continue accepting the pain of white supremacy over and over and over again. And we'll continue to celebrate that pain every 4th of July, every Memorial Day, every Christmas, every Easter. We'll continue to celebrate. Because the pain gives us more pleasure to celebrate because now we think we're valuable and we're worth something because we're defined by our pain. We're not defined by our superiority, our melanin, our melanin, our ancient history. We're not defined by our greatness, our ability, our potential to be independent and to thrive free of the white man. We're not defined by our ability to fight back and conquer and be successful to rule our own destiny and once again rule this planet, we're not defined by that. We're defined by our pain. And that definition that derives from our pain gives us great pleasure because we think that that's being spiritual or being the better person, the one who's able to just accept the pain, deal with the pain. We derive pleasure out of our pain in America. We have a sadomasochist relationship with white supremacy. And we got to break out of that mental slavery, break out of that box. Stop celebrating your pain. Stop celebrating your suffering. Even Black History Month, it doesn't celebrate our greatness. It celebrates our suffering. Black History Punt doesn't even cover our greatness. It it doesn't even cover our identity before the suffering. It starts at slavery. It starts at pain. And we feel good about ourselves. And that's our history. And that's our legacy. We have a country. We say, well, we got the first black president. And the next president that comes in reverses and destroys all of the work that the black president did to reform the country. It was weak, weak reformation. But any attempts to reform the country has been destroyed by the new president, by white supremacy, who who makes a commitment to destroy the legacy of the first black president and to undo everything that he did and make mockery of him. And you celebrate this country. You celebrate your pain. You celebrate your suffering. King Noble Black Supremacy. Join my website, www.com. 
King Noble Uncensored.com. Donate. Don't hate.